Hello everyone, it's TK Friday and I'm really excited today because the TK8 plugin for Photoshop has finally been released. This is a first look video. We're going to look at some of the really cool new features in this plugin. Sit back, relax, let's get started. Welcome everyone to the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'm excited today because the TK8 plugin for Photoshop has finally been released. I'm so excited to show you some of the new features in it today. Some of my favorite new features, by the way, there's a lot of new features in it. I'll go over a few of those today in the uh, TK8 multi-mask panel and also in the uh, TK8 combo slash CX panel. By the way, right now you can save 25% off everything during the TK8 plug-in launch. And there's a code you use, it's TK25 off. Now you can't stack offers right now, so you can't stack my DK15 code on top of this offer. You can only use this offer, and I believe that's for the first 30 days in this launch time. I'll post this link at the bottom of this video where you can purchase the plug-in as well as any videos and take advantage of this 25% offer right now. Let's jump right in. I'm going to show you some of my favorite new features in both the TK8 multi-mask and the TK8 combo slash CX panel. First off, I must say this panel looks really cool. I really love the way it looks. It's very clean and this is the multi-mask panel and this is the TK8 combo panel or you may use the CX panel. Here's the CX panel. It just looks a little different. It's more vertical. Depending on your needs, you may, for your workspace, you may like this panel better, or you may like the combo. I prefer the combo myself, but whichever one you like, that's the one you're going to use. By the way, the TK8 combo and the CX panel both give you the exact same amount of buttons and features. They just look different. There's really a lot of new features in this new TK8 plugin. So I'm not going to show them all to you today because this video would be way too long, but I'm going to show you some of my favorite new features. Let's go to this icon right here. I'm going to click this and open it up. This is a new color grading feature and I love it. It's similar to what you would find in the camera raw filter, but now you don't even have to go to the camera raw filter. You can do it right while you're in Photoshop. And to me, this is going to be such a time saver. Now, again, this is not an in-depth tutorial on how to use all these features, but I just want to show them to you just to pique your interest. See this plus right here? If you click this, you have to click this first, and basically what's happening, it's putting a curves adjustment layer above the last layer you were on. And you have these buttons here. You have black, which would be your shadows, your midtones, and your highlights, or you could do all three at once, okay? So if you wanted to uh, color grade your shadows, click on this, and this little black box comes up here. Say if you want your shadows to be uh, cooler, you can drag this down into the cool range here. You see that? And they're cooling down. Let me just overemphasize this so you can really see it, okay? And then you have this slider here. You can lighten the shadows or darken the shadows. But isn't that cool? You're color grading your image very simply and easily. Here's the before and here's the after. So I've added some cool colors to my shadows. And then we could work with our midtones and highlights. And let's do our midtones. Say we want to warm our midtones up so we can take this and we can drag it and warm those midtones right up. Isn't that really cool? Just like that. Now here's the before and here's the after. And we can even work on the highlights if we want to. Now if you click on this icon, you'll see all the different shadows, highlights, and midtones right here. And you just drag these wherever you want. And it's just that simple. And don't forget with each one of these, you can adjust, you know, the lightness of them. You can make them lighter or darker or the luminous values of those particular tones. That's color grading. And I really enjoy that. I'm going to get a lot of use out of that. Hey, and let me know in the comments section below what your favorite new features are, or if you think these features will really be something that will really aid you in your uh, photo editing workflow. Let me go ahead and just X out of this for now, and we'll look at something else. Let's move down to the combo panel. Now on the combo panel, you're going to notice you got sky selection. Now, if you hold your option key down and hover over these, you can see, uh, get some help here. Or you can have the help come up all the time if you want to. And to do that, all you have to do is find the button here called TK. Click on this and you can have your show tooltips on all the time if you check this on. I don't like to do that. I just like to hold the option or alt key down to see what my uh, 
help is. Okay, so in other words, I'll just hold the option key down. And if I hover over this, it tells me select sky invokes the Photoshop select sky command. Now that's a really cool one right there. So if I click this, it'll select my sky. Do you see that right there? And here is another new feature, believe it or not, and that is these icons here. You can just click on these adjustments. So in other words, like this is your uh, curves adjustment, your levels adjustment, your brightness contrast adjustment, you know, your hue saturation, so on and so forth. You have these buttons here. You can click right on them. So if I click on here, I've added a curves adjustment, and now I can just take this if I want to darken that sky and just pull it down. Isn't that cool? But you got this select sky feature is really cool. And right next to it, if you have a subject, you have a select subject uh, feature as well. So those are really welcome. And then you can also feather your selection with this button right here. Let me show you another new feature on the multi mass panel. So let me go ahead and add a curves adjustment layer, okay? And let me just darken, darken it a little bit, darken the overall image, okay? So now I have this curves adjustment layer with a layer mask on it, and I've darkened my image. But what if I want to just darken the midtones? What I can do is come to this new button right here, click it, and what it lets me do is it will let me add a luminosity mask to this layer mask right here, okay? Really quick, really fast, really simple. So if I said, you know what, I only want those dark tones to go to the mid-tone, so I can click mid-tones one, see what kind of effect I get, okay? Not quite what I'm looking for. Let's try mid-tones two, it'll be a little stronger, but notice I have a mid-tones one layer mask on this layer right here. So let me go to mid-tones two. That's looking really good. Now let me try Midtones 3. Now it darkens even more. So here's my before and here's my after. Isn't that cool? So I can just work on my midtones. If you want to see how much this mask is controlling the image, come to this X right here and click it. Now this is not a new feature. This has been with TK panels in the past. So click this. But that's what it looks like without the layer mask. Now if I click this again, now you can see what that layer mask is doing and how it's only darkening the midtones. I super love this feature because, you know, you could come here and sample things and say, what's a lights one look like on that? You know, what's a lights two look like? What's a darks one look like? What's a darks two look like? And again, what's a midtones one, two, or three looks like? And I like the midtones three. But there's even more here. When you're first starting out using luminosity mask, sometimes you have a hard time understanding how the luminosity mask is really affecting your image. Now, I've been working with luminosity mask for a while, so I can just simply come here and click around and sample these different luminosity mask but if you're not really good at it and you're just learning you have this feature here called two up and let me show you how this works if you click this icon you'll notice i have the mask on the left and the image on the right now whenever i change something here the mask will change and the image will change so you can see how the mask is interacting with your image and how the mask is changing now you can resize your image like this image right here i'm going to go ahead and resize it and get it to fit on the screen like that. And then just simply click this icon and you'll match those two sizes together. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Now they're the same size. I have my mask on the left, my image on the right, or if I click this icon, I could have the mask on the top, the image on the bottom. Whichever you prefer, I like it on the left, mask on left, image on the right. Now, whenever I click here, like if I go to Midtones 1, I'll see a Midtones 1 mask, and I can see how it's interacting with my image here. Let's try Midtones 2, and then a Midtones 3. Isn't that cool? And you also have all these adjustments here that you could work with as well. Like you can paint on your mask. You could apply a curves adjustment to the mask by clicking this icon here. Your curves comes up. Now watch the mask and the image as I change this curve. You notice how they both change, okay? So everything happens in real time here. And this is a great way of learning how, again, luminosity masks work. I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel here for now. But I just want that uh, Midtones 3 mask on there. Now, when you're done with this, all you need to do is click this X. We still have these two images side by side. And just close the one down on the right. Just give this a click. Click the X out. And now we're back just to our image. And we have our mask on here. So... I love that feature, one of my absolute favorites. 
I'll go ahead and increase the size of this image. Click this icon. It will now fit it to the screen. This is not a new feature. It's been here for a while and one I use all the time. Now let me show you another new feature. Let me come up to the color masks. Click this icon. Now that's not a new feature, but what I want to do is select some of these uh, orangish tones in this image and click OK. Now those tones will be selected. I'm just going to leave the selection just the way it is. Maybe I'll lighten it up a bit by sliding this slider over a little bit maybe somewhere yeah right around there but here's the new feature see this um, icon if i hold my option or all key and hover over it it says output paint color this button creates a blank pixel layer in linear light blend mode at 15 percent fill selects the brush tool and loads the mask preview as a selection it then opens the color picker in order to select a foreground color for painting. This arrangement allows burning and dodging with color. Adjust the layers fill to increase or decrease the effect. So let's check it out. Let's click this. And here's our color picker. So now let's, uh, it's remembering the color I already chose. So I could click it again if I want to, an area right in here, but I don't have to. I'm just going to click OK. It makes a selection, then it hides the selection. And now with my brush tool, which it's already given me, I'm going to make it a little bit larger. I'm painting at 100% opacity. And what I'll actually be doing is, and I'm not doing it yet, but I'll be dodging and burning through a selection on this blank pixel layer. And you can see my selection indicators here. They're very easy to see. Looks like marching ants up here and down here. I have this colored rainbow. So you can see that I have a selection. And now I simply dodge and burn with color through my selection, which is controlling everything for me. Now, if I want to, I can paint over that again, or else I could come over to this layer and come to the fill and just increase this fill. Right now it's at 15% by default, so let's increase it. But you see, I can really increase it and make that a lot stronger if I want to. I'm going to leave it pretty strong so you can really see, and I'm going to keep it at around 18%. But here's my before. And here is my after, but that's dodging and burning with color through that linear light blend mode. This is a feature that I will use a lot. I'm, I'm really happy that this has been added to the TK8 multi-mask panel. I have one more feature to show you, but you can see we clearly have a selection here. To get rid of this selection, just come to this icon right here and you can clear out that selection. Or you could do a command or control D as well, but you got the TK8 combo panel, take advantage of it. It makes your life so much easier. I'm going to show you one more feature and it's found right inside of here. This is a special uh, icon which is showing us some workflow extras. Something very new to this panel. Now we have some different things in here. We have color sketch, black and white sketch, color gradient, color gradient one and color gradient two. I'm not going to go over those today, but they're really nice. I'm going to show you color sketch and black and white sketch. If you've been around for a while watching my joy of editing YouTube channel, you know I love artistic effects on photographs, and this is one that's going to give that to us. So let's go ahead and click color sketch and see what happens. I'll click this icon, give it a second or two, and we notice we have this dialogue comes up for minimum. Now you can adjust this. It looks like we have a nice black and white sketch right now. Now you could take this radius and we can adjust it. We can increase it and you can see the effect gets stronger or I can move it to the left and the effect will get weaker. Let me make the effect a little bit stronger somewhere. That's too strong. Maybe, maybe here. I think that looks good and click OK. Now watch what happens. We have a beautiful little color sketch and I love this. Now I would probably take it further here. I would probably do some painting on top of it or whatever or come over to the uh, color sketch group. Click on color sketch the actual group itself and take the opacity and start to ease it back and maybe just tone it down a little bit like something like that is really nice. Now it's a little bit too blue in here for me so what I would do is maybe add a hue saturation layer I'm just going to use this icon right here on top of that. And let me just uh, click on some of the blue here and drag this to the left and re reduce some of that saturation there. And here's my before and here's my after. But isn't that nice? It's just a nice little sketchy look. But we could take it further, but I'll be experimenting with this and I'm sure I'll do some tutorials on this down the road. But let me go ahead and shut this off for now and show you black and white sketch. 
So let's click this icon again, and now let's click on black and white sketch, and we will see that we get another one of these minimum dialogues that come up. And now again, we can simply adjust the radius here. We can make it a stronger effect by dragging this to the right, and I kind of like that. That looks really cool, and click OK. And just like that, we have a black and white sketch. Now again, we could come up to the group and if we want to let a little color in on there, we can start to drag this back and maybe just introduce just a little hint of that color in there, which is kind of nice. Or we could even play with blend modes here. We could go through and see what how different blend modes interact with it. Like for instance, there's darken, here's, here's multiply, which looks pretty cool, right? So you can see the possibilities could be kind of interesting here by playing with different blend modes. There's multiply, there's color burn. We could try different ones. There's linear burn. Let's see what overlay looks like. You know, overlay is kind of fun. And then we have soft light. So we could play around or if we just wanted a straightforward black and white sketch, we just leave it here. And maybe I could take this and if I want it stronger, maybe add a levels adjustment above it and... Let's see here and maybe darken it up a bit more if we wanted to. So we could play with it and have some fun. But that is black and white sketch. Well, that wraps up another TK Friday. Today I showed you the TK8 plugin for Photoshop. It's just been released. This was a first look and I showed you some of my favorite new features. There's a lot more there, but I wanted to show you my favorites today. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. Well, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.